to cooperate in the construction of wind farms offshore, as well as to coordinate electricity grids at sea, 10 European North Sea states have agreed to join the North Sea Energy Cooperation. Belgium, Denmark, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden, together with the European Commission, are working on a common goal to gain more offshore wind energy and less cables. The work program for 2020 to 2023 and the new structure puts a particular emphasis on developing concrete cross-border offshore wind and grid projects that would reduce costs and space of offshore developments. Europe is in the middle of an energy transition and North Sea offshore wind farms have a huge role to play in that transition. The six countries bordering on the North Sea are planning to install about 200 gigawatts of wind farms by 2050. To give you a frame of reference, these 200 gigawatts are equivalent to the maximum electricity consumption of these six countries today. So using the offshore potential as efficiently as possible will play a huge part in decarbonizing the European energy system. Cooperation is a key component to the success of the developments. The BVO, or Association of German Offshore Wind Farm Operators, represents all 17 companies that develop and construct wind farms in the German waters. BVO Executive Director Stefan Tim explains the breadth of cooperation necessary in the industry. Offshore industry is clearly international. Uh, this starts with the uh, operators themselves. But if you think about the manufacturer market, uh, it is also international, uh, transnational. This goes on with the teams uh, which uh, develop, construct, maintain and repair the wind farms. With intermittent energy sources such as wind, planning demand can be challenging. While it's windy in Sweden, it may be relatively calm in the Netherlands, so coordination between power producers and demand is essential. Amprion is one of the four transmission system operators in Germany. Its branch Amprion Offshore is responsible for connecting transmission lines from the farms in the North Sea to its transmission network in Germany. The generation from wind farms will vary at any given time, but the wind farms are connected, the electricity generated can be distributed to where it is needed, regardless of where it was actually generated, without having to be transported through the onshore grid, which is already highly utilized. The offshore grid will be the physical platform that allows for exchange of carbon-free electricity for the benefit of all parties. Wind Europe is an organization that advocates for wind energy, representing 400 companies across the European value chain. CEO Giles Dixon highlights the value of cross-industry collaboration when sharing the seas. Maritime spatial planning is too much done in silos. The thinking is, right, the shipping lanes are here, we do the fishing here, the military zones are here, these are the environmental protection zones, and somewhere else you do the offshore wind. Actually, we want more multiple use of the sea space. Let people come and fish under certain circumstances in offshore wind farms, for example. Align our interests with those of the military, for example. The North Sea Energy Cooperation wants to improve cross-border coordination in the expansion of offshore wind energy and link the production of offshore wind power with cross-border electricity trading. In order to save cable, it would be possible to use an additional line to link existing power lines in the individual countries with newly connected wind farms. This would mean fewer cables would have to be installed. This helps to prevent cable tangle and reduces the overall costs for the expensive lines. This would also improve the capacity utilization of the lines and the security of supply in the connected countries, because the offshore wind power can also go ashore even when there is no wind off the coast. Connecting generation to the grid on land will require a massive infrastructural installation, including a power center, masses of cables to transmit energy to surrounding countries, and the wind turbines themselves. This development requires heavy capital investment, but who should pay? One idea is the contracts for different system. This model um, leads to lower electricity costs on the one side and lower risks uh, on the other side. And it works like this. The government says to the wind industry, OK, you build wind farms. We will guarantee you a certain revenue for the first, say, 15 years. If 
the market price you're getting is lower than that guaranteed revenue, we pay you the difference. If you're getting more from the market than we guarantee, then you pay back the difference to us. So it works both ways. It's pretty cheap for governments because they pay out, but they also get paid back. And crucially, it's good in reducing the capital costs, the financing costs for those wind farms, because you can go to the bank and the bank knows you've got a stable revenue perspective and therefore they will lend you money to help finance the development of that wind farm at lower interest. Concrete joint wind projects in the North Sea are also to be developed and advanced within the North Sea Energy Cooperation. One such project could be the North Sea Wind Power Hubs conceived by the transmission system operator Tenet. Artificial islands for up to 15,000 megawatts of wind power capacity each would be built in the North Sea. Connected to several countries, such hubs would facilitate import and export of wind power. The North Sea Energy Cooperation represents a great opportunity to provide more clean energy across European borders. And there's a few major ways to speed up the trajectory towards a carbon neutral future. One, stop building coal fired power stations and close the existing coal fired power stations down as soon as possible. Two, simplify the permitting of renewable energy projects so that we can build wind and solar as quickly and as easily as possible. A European regulatory framework and cooperation across nations and industries will build a stable, efficient supply of renewable energy to the member states. Though there are challenges such as the complexities of cabling and building an adequate financing scheme, offshore wind has a massive role to play in the energy transition and will help pave the way to a clean, carbon-neutral society.